An interest rate swap is a financial contract in which one side receives a series of fixed rate payments and the other side receives a series of floating rate payments. The value to both sides should initially be zero, but because this is a zero-sum game, after some time passes and how rates change in the market, one side will gain exactly what the other side loses. This is not actually a very easy contract to value, so let's hop into Excel and take a look at it. Every interest rate swap has a notional principal amount that the swap is based on. For this example, we'll use a value of $10 million, and we'll also use the assumption that this, the fixed rate side of this swap pays 3.5%. We're also going to use an assumed treasury curve. So you can see down here, I have a graph of that treasury curve, and it's just saying that the uh, treasury rate for six months in the future is 3%, one year in the future is 4%, etc. Now, let's say that the floating rate side of this swap is based on the six month treasury rate. So we'll just say the floating rate equals the six month uh, treasury curve rate. So that'll be 3%. Now, first thing we have to do is value a fixed rate bond based on this assumption. And this is because the, tr the swap is just essentially two separate bonds. One would be a, floating, a fixed rate bond and one would be a floating rate bond. And we can find the value to each side by subtracting those values from one another. And you'll see what I mean here. So if we're on the side that's uh, receiving the fixed rate bond, we would be receiving a cash flow equal to this this uh, annual fixed rate of 3.5% divided by 2 multiplied by this notional principle of $10 million. And we would actually, I'm going to lock that in with by hitting key F4 on my keyboard, both of them. And so we'll receive a cash flow of $175,000 every single period. But the last period, we're actually going to receive that $175,000 plus the $10 million notional. So these, this is our table or series of cash flows for the fixed rate bond side of this swap. Then the present value of each one will just be equal to the cash flow for that period divided by one plus the interest rate for that period of time to the exponent of how many years in the future that is. So we hit enter and now we've, I'm copying with control C and I'm just pasting formulas. Now we can see the present value for this entire series of cash flows. And then we'll do equals sum to find the total value of this hypothetical fixed rate bond. And we find that to be $10,004,175. Now we need to calculate the, float, the value of the floating rate bond. So first we need to find the cash flow six months from now, which will be equal to um, that three month floating or that six month floating rate divided by two. And the reason I'm dividing by two is because both of these bonds, they pay semi-annual. So we're taking the rates divided by two to reflect that it's semi-annual, not annual. And then we'll multiply that rate by the notional principle. And then here we're actually going to add the notional principle once again. So we receive this whole cash flow 0.5 years in the future there's no cash flows beyond that because this is a floating rate bond that reprices itself back to par at every single coupon date so now we'll calculate the present value of this cash flow which is equal to this divided by one plus the interest rate for that period of time uh to the exponent or to the power of how many years in the future which is 0.5 and then the value for this one is just going to be equal to sum of the whole range, which is just simply that one present value. So now if we want to find the value of this swap to the pay fixed receive float side, we would say that that value is equal to, um, so if we're, if we're receiving the float side, we have, we're receiving an asset that's worth this amount, but we're giving away or paying an asset that's worth this amount, the fixed amount. So we're actually at a loss if we are on the side that um, re that receives float and pays fixed. And then the value to the receive fixed pay float side is just the opposite of the value to the uh, receive float pay uh, fixed. So here we go. And so now we see that one side's loss is exactly equal to the other side's gain. 
what if we change this rate to this two year rate to 4.5%? How would this maybe change things? Now we see that the, uh, the value to the pay fixed receive float side is actually substantially uh, positive and the value to the receive fixed pay float side is substantially negative. But how, let's say if we were entering the market and we wanted to enter a swap contract based on these, this treasury curve and this fixed rate amount, what would be the floating rate that we would have to settle on for this contract to be valued exactly equal to zero today? Well, we can find that out by going and clicking on data solver. And then so we're going to set the value of C15 right here to a value of zero by changing this floating rate in cell C3. And then we'll hit solve. And so then Excel's telling us that a fixed rate of 4.43% will basically make this contract exactly equal to zero. And this is how swaps would be priced on day one in the real world. So if you'd like to uh, try out this spreadsheet for yourself, uh, please check the download link in the description. And thank you so much for watching and hopefully sticking with me till this point of the video. So have a nice one.